Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel. And today's topic of discussion is power measurement in three-phase AC systems using the two-watt meter method. Our objective is to examine the two-watt meter method employed to measure power in balanced and unbalanced three-phase AC systems. We'll compare and contrast this method with the three-watt meter and the single-watt meter method and discuss which methods work in which situations and which don't. This lecture operates under the presumption the viewer has more than a passing familiarity with the analysis of balanced and unbalanced four-wire Y, three-wire Y, and delta configurations in three-phase AC systems, as illustrated in the three-phase AC examples lecture, available at the Big Bad Tech channel. Additionally, it is presumed the viewer has a nodding acquaintance with both the three-watt meter method and the single-watt meter method, as illustrated in the single-watt meter method lecture, also available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched these lectures yet, or only dimly recall their contents, please take the time to do so now. So this lecture doesn't bog down in lengthy calculations, Let's just use the results of the aforementioned three-phase AC examples lecture as a jumping off point for our discussion. If you recall, we calculated the electrical properties of a balanced configuration of three load elements, where each element is modeled as an impedance of 425 ohms at an angle of 40 degrees, when configured as a balanced four-wire Y, a balanced three-wire Y, and a balanced delta configuration in a 60 Hz, 120, 208 volt three-phase AC system. Then we modified one of our impedances to 345 ohms at an angle of 30 degrees and analyzed an unbalanced 4-wire Y, an unbalanced 3-wire Y, and an unbalanced delta configuration in the 60 Hz 120-208 volt 3-phase AC system. The results for the unbalanced configurations appear before you. You'll note some very predictable outcomes that highlight how different unbalanced load configurations interact with the 3-phase AC system. You may want to take a screenshot of this data particularly the line-to-line -line voltages, the line current, and the power figures, because we'll be referencing this set for several illustrated examples. During one of the aforementioned lectures, we explored the use of the single watt meter method to measure power in balanced three-phase AC systems. The single watt meter method is not applicable for unbalanced three-phase AC systems. Today, we'll explore power measurement in unbalanced three-phase AC systems using the two watt meter method. As such, We'll zoom in on the data for each of the unbalanced configurations. For the unbalanced 4-wire Y configuration, each load impedance still directly experiences a smaller line-to-neutral voltage. Load current magnitude and relative phase shift for each load is proportional to an Ohm's law manipulation, as is power for each individual load. Given one of the loads is different, current and power for that branch is understandably different. In the unbalanced condition, current travels in the neutral line. Total apparent, total real, and total reactive power is the summation of individual apparent, individual real, and individual reactive power figures. For the unbalanced three-wire Y configuration, any imbalanced current is left to circulate throughout the system. As such, voltage and current for each branch impedance is different, as is power. Total apparent, total real, and total reactive power is still the summation of individual apparent, real, and reactive power figures. You note for Y configuration analysis, it's a recommended practice to reference everything with respect to one of the line to the neutral voltages. In this case, L1 at 120 volts at an angle of zero degrees. If you wanted to be hard-headed about this and reference all your calculations with respect to one of the line-to-line -line voltages, you have to shift these results by negative 30 degrees or 30 degrees clockwise. As inconvenient as this is, this will become an important consideration for the two watt meter method. Finally, for the unbalanced delta configuration, each load impedance still directly experiences the larger line-to-line -line voltage. Load current magnitude and relative phase shift for each load is proportional to an Ohm's law manipulation as is power for each individual load. In the unbalanced condition, line currents are also different. Total apparent, total real, and total reactive power is the summation of individual apparent, real, and reactive power figures. You note for delta configuration calculations, it's a recommended practice to reference everything with respect to one of the line-to-line -line voltages, in this case L1, L2, at 208 volts at an angle of zero degrees. If you wanted to be hard-headed about this and reference all your calculations with respect to one of the line to neutral voltages, you'd have to shift these results by 30 degrees counterclockwise or positive 30 degrees. The larger point for this particular lecture focusing on three-phase power measurement being this. You already know how to calculate and measure power in three-phase AC systems. AC power consists of real and reactive components, and these different dimensions of power can be calculated for an individual element using any one of the numerous methods at our disposal. Power for an individual load is a complex conjugate of load voltage times load current. Additionally, power for an individual load is a complex conjugate of load voltage squared divided by impedance. And finally, power for an individual load is a complex conjugate of load current squared times impedance. 
total apparent, total real, and total reactive power for a three-phase AC system is simply the summation of individual apparent, real, and reactive power figures and will remain so whether the load is balanced or unbalanced. Y or delta, black, brown, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, gray, or white. Again, calculating power for individual elements should be well within your capacity. Total power is simply the summation of individual powers. As we previously discussed in the aforementioned lectures, a brute force 3 watt meter invasion could directly measure power for a 4 wire Y configured load, a 3 wire Y configured load, or a delta configured load in the balanced or unbalanced condition, where total apparent, total real, and total reactive power is simply the summation of individual apparent, real, and reactive power figures. The 3 watt meter method is a reliable and robust technique that really lets a user know exactly what's happening to each individual load at any point in time. This being said, Implementing the 3 watt meter method is expensive and time consuming because it necessitates actively digging into the loads to access the test points, the exception being the 4 wire Y configuration in which all test points are externally accessible. Some loads like 3 wire Y and delta configurations don't facilitate invasive inspection. Is there any way to measure power in an unbalanced 3 phase AC system without having to dig into the loads and perhaps one that uses less equipment and less confusing connections? Indeed there is. This is known as the 2 watt meter method, and like the previous methods we've discussed, it too has its advantages and associated disadvantages. The 2 watt meter method makes use of 2 watt meters, big surprise, configured in the following fashion. Note watt meter 1 is measuring the line to line voltage from L1 with respect to L2, and line current in line 1. Watt meter 2 however is doing something interesting. Recall I've encouraged you again and again to simply pick a direction and stick with it when approaching three-phase AC circuit analysis scenarios. I typically go L1 to L2, L2 to L3, and L3 back to L1. Watt meter 2, however, is violating this recommendation, as instead measuring voltage from L3 with respect to L2. This is counter to the advice I've been giving you, yet absolutely essential to the 2 watt meter method. Watt meter 2 measures current in line L3 in the traditional direction from the source to the load. Given a 120, 208 volt, 60 hertz, 3 phase AC system, L1, L2 would be 208 volts at an angle of zero if we assumed it was the reference. Watt meter 1 would measure L1, L2 as we've been traditionally presenting it, as 208 volts at an angle of zero degrees. Watt meter 2, however, given its flip flop polarity, would measure L3, L2 as negative 208 volts at an angle of negative 120 degrees, or 208 volts at an angle of negative 120 degrees plus or minus an additional 180 degrees, or alternatively as 208 volts at an angle of 60 degrees. Graphically, L3 with respect to L2 would be the back azimuth or negation of L2 with respect to L3. Note both watt meters in the 2 watt meter method are external to the Y or delta configured load and do not necessitate any invasive inspection. If the thought, each watt meter in the system is reading nonsense, ever crossed your mind, you'd be absolutely correct. In isolation, each watt meter's reading in the 2 watt meter method is absolute garbage. If, however, we add the 2 watt meter's readings, we obtain the total apparent, the total real, and the total reactive power. How can this be true? I'd explain, but it'd be a waste of both your time and my time since it's a mathematical goat show of epic proportions and absolutely not essential to the implementation and practical use of the 2 watt meter method. Long story short, I like to think of the 2 watt meter method as a means of indirectly monitoring any imbalance in the system by keeping a hand on two lines, i.e. the two line current ammeters, and a foot on the other, i.e. making use of the other line as our reference. With three points of contact, the truth can be squeezed from this system. Note the 2 watt meter method is entirely external to this system. It works for either Y or delta configurations, and for damn sure, it's a lot easier to implement than the 3 watt meter method. The principal distinguishing characteristic of the 2 watt meter method, in contrast to the single watt meter method we discussed in a previous lecture, is that it is suitable for both balanced and unbalanced loads. Allow me to demonstrate. Let's take a look at the 2 watt meter method employed in our example unbalanced delta configuration. If you recall, we obtained the following data during the three phase AC examples lecture for an unbalanced delta, where one impedance ZAB was modified to 345 ohms at an angle of 30 degrees, and impedances ZBC and ZCA remained 425 ohms at an angle of 40 degrees. 
Load current and power experienced by unmodified impedances ZBC and ZCA remained unaffected, whereas load current and power experienced by the modified impedance CAB changed in comparison to our balance delta. Given these modified conditions internal to the delta, line currents I1 and I2 external to the delta also changed. Total apparent, total real, and total reactive power was a summation of individual apparent, real, and reactive power figures. Ideally, the two watt meter method should yield these same results. However, it will be easier and cheaper to implement and necessitate no invasive inspection as would a 3 watt meter method. Recall the calculations we made for the unbalanced delta configuration made use of L1, L2 as our reference. As such, we don't really need to compensate for any phase shifted offset between a line to line and a line to neutral voltage since the 2 watt meters central to the 2 watt meter method are reading the line to line voltages. This will not be true for the unbalanced Y configuration, a follow up illustrated example. Note watt meter 1 measures line 1 with respect to line 2 and line current in line 1. Watt meter 2, however, is flip flopped and measures line 3 with respect to line 2 and line current in line 3. Watt meter 1's line 1 to line 2 voltage reading would be 208 volts at an angle of 0 degrees, and its line L1 current reading would be 897.1 milliampers at an angle of negative 60.8 degrees. Current lags voltage by a relative 60.8 degrees. Application of the AC power formula demonstrates watt meter 1 would display 186.6 volt amperes, of which 91 watts is directed towards real power and 162.9 VARs is directed towards reactive interchange. Taken in isolation, this watt meter's reading is garbage because it's not the whole picture. Watt meter 2's voltmeter is flip flopped. Watt meter 2's line 3 to line 2 voltage reading would be 208 volts at an angle of 60 degrees and its line L3 current reading would be 147.7 milliampers at an angle of 50 degrees. Current would lag voltage by a relative 10 degrees. Application of the AC power formula demonstrates watt meter 2 would display 176.3 volt amperes of apparent power, of which 173.6 watts is directed towards real power and 30.6 VARs is directed towards reactive interchange. Again, taken in isolation, this watt meter's reading is also garbage because it's not the whole picture. If, however, we add watt meter 1's reading with watt meter 2's reading, we obtain a total real power figure of approximately 264.7 watts and a total reactive power figure of 193.5 VARs. Packaging these as the real and imaginary components of a complex number in rectangular format, we can convert it to polar format as 327.8 volt amperes, which yields our total apparent power figure. These figures closely match those we obtained in our previous analysis. The advantage being that the 2 watt meter method is external to the delta configured load and we're using less equipment. Let's now take a look at the 2 watt meter method employed in our example unbalanced 3 wire Y configuration. If you recall, we obtained the following data during the three phase AC examples lecture for an unbalanced 3 wire Y configuration where 1 impedance Z1 was modified to 345 ohms at an angle of 30 degrees and impedances Z2 and Z3 remained 425 ohms at an angle of 40 degrees. Given imbalance current is left to circulate throughout the system, almost every aspect of the unbalanced 3-wire Y configuration changed compared to our previous balanced 3-wire Y configuration. Not only is current different for every branch impedance, so is voltage. Understandably, power figures for each branch impedance differ. Total apparent, total real, and total reactive power is the summation of individual apparent, real, and reactive power figures. Ideally, the 2 watt meter method should yield these same results however, be easier and cheaper to implement and necessitate no invasive inspection. Recall the calculations we made for the unbalanced 3-wire Y configuration made use of L1 with reference to neutral as our reference. Given the 2 watt meters central to the 2 watt meter method are not reading line to neutral voltages, but rather the line to line voltages, we do need to compensate for the phase shifted offset between line to line and line to neutral voltage. As such, each voltage and current figure would experience a 30 degree clockwise or negative 30 degree offset when L1, L2 is employed as a reference. I will readily admit this is a real pain, but it's essential if our analysis is to yield correct results. Again, this is for demonstration purposes only and actual implementation of the 2 watt meter method is a lot easier than I'm making this out to be. Again, in practice, one would simply add up the readings for the 2 watt meters to obtain total power. Really, we only need to compensate for L1 and L3 current values. Line L1 current reading would be 324 milliampers at an angle of negative 33.8 minus an additional 30 degrees or negative 63.8 degrees if we employed L1, L2 as our reference. Similarly, line L3 current reading 
would be 278.4 milliampers at an angle of 85.4 degrees minus an additional 30 degrees or 55.4 degrees using our new reference. Power figures remain unaffected. Note wattmeter 1 measures line 1 with respect to line 2 and line current in line 1. Wattmeter 2, however, is flip-flopped and measures line 3 with reference to line 2 and line current in line 3. Wattmeter 1's line 1 to line 2 voltage reading would be 208 volts at an angle of 0 degrees. Again, we're assuming L1, L2 to be our reference, and this wattmeter's line L1 current reading will be 324 milliampers at an angle of negative 63.8 degrees. Current would lag voltage by a relative 63.8 degrees. Application of the AC power formula demonstrates wattmeter 1 would display 67.4 volt amperes of apparent power, of which 29.8 watts is directed towards real power, and 60.5 VARs is directed towards a reactive interchange. Taken in isolation, this wattmeter's reading is garbage because it's not the whole picture. Wattmeter 2's voltmeter portion is flip-flopped. Wattmeter 2's line 3 to line 2 voltage reading would be 208 volts at an angle of 60 degrees, and its line L3 current reading would be 278.4 milliampers at an angle of 55.4 degrees. Current lags voltage by a relative 4.6 degrees. Application of the AC power formula demonstrates wattmeter 2 would display 57.9 volt amperes of apparent power, of which 57.7 watts is directed towards real power and 4.6 virus is directed towards a reactive interchange. Again, taken in isolation, this wattmeter's reading is also garbage because it's not the whole picture. If, however, we add these two wattmeter readings, we obtain a total real power figure of approximately 87.4 watts and a total reactive power figure of approximately 65.1 vars. Packaging these figures as the real and imaginary components of a complex number of rectangular format, we can convert it to polar format as 109 volt amperes, which yields our total apparent power figure. These figures closely match those we obtained in our previous analysis, the advantage being that our 2 wattmeter method is external to the Y configured load and it uses less equipment than the 3 wattmeter method. Again, don't necessarily concern yourself too much with referencing and re referencing for actual implementation of the 2 wattmeter method. The only reason we had to do this for this particular illustrated example is because we initially chose L1 as our previous reference. Lacking access to the neutral node, this wouldn't be an option, we'd have to choose something accessible as our reference, in this case, line 1 with respect to line 2. Before we tackle some illustrated example problems, let's review the characteristics of the 2 wattmeter method and then compare and contrast it with some of the other techniques we've previously discussed. The 2 wattmeter method can be employed for a balanced 4-wire Y, a balanced 3-wire Y, a balanced delta, an unbalanced 3-wire Y, and an unbalanced delta configuration. It is external to the load and does not necessitate invasive inspection. No wattmeter 1 measures line 1 with reference to line 2, and line current in line 1. Wattmeter 2, however, is flip-flopped and measures L3 with respect to L2 and line current in line 3. Total apparent, total real, and total reactive power is the summation of the two wattmeters readings, themselves nonsense when taken in isolation. You'd think the two wattmeter method would be the single ideal solution for all power measurement scenarios, but you'll note a conspicuous absence in its applicability, that of unbalanced 4 wire y configurations. Recall that 4-wire Y configurations are really the easiest types of loads to measure since each test point is externally accessible. The fundamental drawback to employing the 2 wattmeter method to an unbalanced 4-wire Y configuration is that any imbalanced current is channeled away from the load via the fourth neutral wire and it escapes the 2 wattmeter's attention. As useful and convenient as it is, the 2 wattmeter method is not without its shortcoming, minor as they may be. Let's review the other three-phase AC power measurement techniques we previously discussed, starting with a 3 wattmeter invasion. 3 wattmeters can measure power experienced by each individual load in any configuration, a 4-wire Y, a 3-wire Y, or a delta in either the balanced or unbalanced condition. Total apparent, total real, and total reactive power is the summation of individual apparent real and reactive power figures. As reliable and robust as it is, the 3 wattmeter method is expensive, invasive, and time-consuming. If we restrict ourselves to the analysis of only balanced loads, total apparent, total real, and total reactive power would be an individual apparent real or reactive power figure times 3. A single wattmeter configured in the following fashion could measure power for an individual load. This method is substantially easier than the 3 wattmeter method, however, it still necessitates invasive inspection. In the case of the 3-wire Y configuration, the voltmeter portion of the wattmeter 
needs to dig into the load to get a voltage reading. In the case of the delta configuration, the ammeter portion of the wattmeter needs to dig into the load to get a load current reading. Again, this method is suitable only for balanced loads, since any imbalance would go undetected because we're only looking at one third of the picture. A solution to this invasive inspection problem is the use of the single wattmeter method configured in the following fashion, where total apparent power using the single wattmeter method is the line to line voltage times the line current times square root three. The single wattmeter method is suitable for balanced four wire Ys, balanced three wire Ys, and balanced delta configurations. Determining relative phase shift between voltage and current directly experienced by an individual load is admittedly a little difficult using this method, since there will always be a 30 degree offset between measured line to line voltage and actual voltage experienced by a Y configured load and measured line current and actual load current experienced by the delta configured loads. However, if a user is aware of a pre-calculated power factor figure, this really isn't a concern. You'll be happy to know that most three-phase AC motors are considered balanced loads and have the power factor printed right on the motor nameplate. At the rated conditions, one simply measures line-to-line -line voltage and line current and multiplies it by square root 3 to obtain total apparent power. Total real and total reactive power can then be derived using the pre-calculated power factor figure. Again, the single watt meter method is suitable only for balanced loads since any imbalance would go undetected because we're only looking at part of the picture. Let's close out this lecture with some illustrated examples of some of these time-saving power measurement techniques, just to make sure you're tracking. Consider a three-phase AC motor, modeled as a balanced three-wire Y configuration drawing, let's say, two amps at a lagging power factor of 0.82 from a 220, 380 volt, 50 hertz, three-phase AC system. Which power measurement would you use? The clear, wrong answer is the three watt meter method since it's expensive, invasive, and time-consuming. This being said, it would be robust and reliable. Probably the easiest and cheapest method, since the load is balanced, is to use the single watt meter method external to the motor. It should be emphasized that elements in Y configurations do not experience the line to line voltage. However, given a balanced condition, we can make use of balanced circuit properties using the single watt meter method. Line to line voltage would be 380 volts. Line current would be 2 amps. 380 times 2 times square root 3 is roughly 1,316.4 volt amperes. This is our total apparent power figure. Total apparent power times power factor yields a total real power figure of 1,079.4 watts. An algebraic manipulation of the apparent, real, and reactive power figures yields a total reactive power figure of 753.4 vars. Let's consider this same motor's windings broken apart and reconfigured as a delta. While in the delta configuration, let's say it draws 6 amps, also a lagging power factor of 0.82 from the 220, 380 volt, 50 hertz, 3 phase AC source. This should be emphasized, line current is not load current for a delta configuration. However, given a balanced condition, we can make use of balanced circuit properties using the single watt meter method. Line to line voltage is 380 volts. Line current is 6 amps. 380 times 6 times square root 3 is roughly 3,949.1 volt amperes. This is our total apparent power figure. Total apparent power times power factor yields a total real power figure of 3,238 watts. An algebraic manipulation of the relationship of apparent real and reactive power yields a total reactive power figure of 2,260.3 vars. Note how the same motor, when configured as a delta, experience roughly three times the power as when configured as a Y. This is to be expected. Windings in a delta configuration experience a line-to-line -line differential square root three times that experienced by the windings in a Y configuration. As a result, they draw square root three times as much current. Power is the product of voltage and current. Square root three times square root three is three. Additionally, you'll note that line current at delta would be square root three times larger than that experienced by an individual load. If each line external to the delta is drawing six amps, it means each load inside the delta is experiencing roughly six divided by square root three, or roughly 3.5 amps. This should be making sense to you. If it isn't, probably just multiply or divide something by square root three and maybe shift it by 30 degrees, you'll most likely be correct. Let's put these figures aside and compare them with the same motors measured using the two watt meter method. Ideally, we should obtain the same results. Let's consider the use of the two watt meter method for this same Y and delta configured motor just to prove this method works for balanced conditions. Ideally, we should get the same results as previously. 
When configured by a Y, let's say each line current is 2 amps and lags the nearest line to neutral voltage by a relative 35 degrees. Lagging by approximately 35 degrees is what it means to have a power factor of 0.82. Fair warning, there will be a little slop in our calculations because inverse cosine of 0.82 is actually 34.9 degrees, but I am not carrying this burden around with me all day. Lagging by 35 degrees is good enough for me. The results obtained using the 2 watt meter method should still be pretty close. Despite the fact that the loads internal to the balance Y configuration don't experience the line to line voltage, the 2 watt meters external to the system do. And as a result, we need to reference this system to one of the line to line voltages, in this case, L1, L2 at 380 volts at an angle of 0 degrees. Using L1, L2 as our reference, line current in line 1 would be 2 amps at an angle of negative 35 degrees minus an additional 30 degrees or minus 65 degrees. And line current in line 3 would be 2 amps at an angle of 85 degrees minus 30 degrees or 55 degrees. Watt meter 1 would measure 380 volts at an angle of 0 degrees and 2 amps at an angle of negative 65 degrees. Application of the AC power formula demonstrates watt meter 1 would display 760 volt amperes of which 321.2 watts is directed towards real power and 688.8 bars is directed towards a reactive interchange. Taken in isolation, watt meter 1's reading is pure garbage because it's not the whole picture. Watt meter 2 measures 380 volts at an angle of 60 degrees. Note the flip-flop polarity and 2 amps at an angle of 55 degrees. Current lags voltage by a relative 5 degrees. Application of the AC power formula demonstrates watt meter 2 would display 760 volt amperes of which 757.1 watts is directed towards real power and 66.2 vars is directed towards a reactive interchange. Taken in isolation, watt meter 2's reading is also pure garbage because it's not the whole picture. If however we add these two watt meter readings together, we obtain a total real power figure of approximately 1078.3 watts and a total reactive power figure of approximately 755 vars. Packaging these as the real and imaginary components of a complex number in rectangular format, we can convert it to polar format as 1,316.4 volt amperes, which yields our total apparent power figure. These figures closely match those we obtained using the single watt meter method, any error being attributable to our approximation of a lagging power factor of 0.82 to be equal to a relative lag of exactly 35 degrees. Let's now examine the two watt meter method employed on the balanced delta configured motor. Ideally, we should get the same values we obtain using the single watt meter method. Loads inside the balanced delta would experience a relative phase shift of roughly 35 degrees between voltage and current. This is again an approximation of what having a lagging power factor of 0.82 implies. Outside of the balanced delta, line currents would be square root 3 times as large and be shifted from the nearest load current by an additional 30 degrees. Using L1, L2 as our reference, line current and line 1 would be 6 amps at an angle of negative 35 minus 30 degrees or minus 65 degrees. And line current and line 3 would be 6 amps at an angle of 85 degrees minus an additional 30 degrees or 55 degrees. Watt meter 1 would measure 380 volts at an angle of 0 degrees and 6 amps at an angle of negative 65 degrees. Application of the AC power formula demonstrates watt meter 1 would display 2,280 volt amperes of which 963.6 watts is directed towards real power and 2,066.4 vars is directed towards a reactive interchange. Taken in isolation, watt meter 1's reading is garbage because it's not the whole picture. Watt meter 2 measures 380 volts at an angle of 60 degrees. Note the flip-flop polarity and 6 amps at an angle of 55 degrees. Current lags voltage by a relative 5 degrees. Application of the AC power formula demonstrates watt meter 2 would display 2,280 volt amperes of apparent power, of which 2,271 watts is directed towards real power and 198.7 vars is directed towards a reactive interchange. Taken in isolation, this reading is also pure garbage because it's not the whole picture. If however we add these readings together, we obtain a total real power figure of approximately 3,234.9 watts and a total reactive power figure of approximately 2,265.1 vars. Packaging these as the real and imaginary components of a complex number in rectangular format, we can convert it to polar format as 3,949.1 volt amperes, which yields our total apparent power figure. These figures closely match those we obtain using the single watt meter method, any minor error being attributable to our approximation of a lagging power factor of 0.82 to be equal to a relative lag of exactly 35 degrees. Finally, consider power measurement for some absolutely unknown three-phase AC load. 
It's stuffed in a bag, locked in a box, wrapped in duct tape, and has a sign hanging on it that says, Go away. Three wires lead out of the box to our 220, 380 volt, 50 hertz, three phase AC system. Which three phase AC power measurement technique would you use? Obviously, the three watt meter method is not applicable because it necessitates invasive inspection and you can't get inside the box. The single watt meter method, while external to the box, might also not be a good choice either considering we have no way of telling whatever load inside the box is balanced or unbalanced. The clear choice is the two watt meter method. As I was earlier saying, for practical applications of the two watt meter method, we really don't have to worry about referencing and re-referencing line to line voltage versus line to neutral voltage, nor line versus load current to apply the two watt meter method because we quite literally don't care what's in the box, a Y or a delta. All we have to do is concern ourselves with a relative phase shift experience at the two watt meters external to the box. Let's say watt meter one experiences a line to line differential of 380 volts at an angle of zero degrees and a line current in line one of four amps at an angle of negative 40 degrees. There would be a relative phase shift of 40 degrees between the line to line voltage and the line current for watt meter one. Application of the AC power formula demonstrates watt meter one would display 1,520 volt amperes of which 1,164.4 watts is directed towards real power and 977 virus is directed towards a reactive interchange. Taken in isolation, this reading is pure garbage because it's not the whole picture. Let's say watt meter two experiences a line to line differential of 380 volts at an angle of 60 degrees. Again, note the flip flop polarity and a line current in line three of 4.5 amps at an angle of 40 degrees. There would be a relative phase shift of 20 degrees between line to line voltage and line current. Note we're clearly dealing with an unbalanced system since current magnitude in line three isn't the same as current in line one, nor does it exhibit a relative phase shift of 120 degrees. Luckily, we chose the two watt meter method, which can reliably measure power in unbalanced three wire systems. Application of the AC power formula demonstrates watt meter two would display 1,710 volt amperes of apparent power of which 1,606.9 watts is directed towards real power and 584.9 VARs is directed towards a reactive interchange. Taken in isolation, this reading is also pure garbage because it's not the whole picture. If however we add these readings together, we obtain a total real power figure of approximately 2,771.3 watts and a total reactive power figure of 1,561.9 VARs. Packaging these as the real and imaginary components of a complex number in rectangular format, we can convert it to polar format as 3,181.1 volt amperes, which yields our total apparent power figure. Is this an unbalanced three wire Y or an unbalanced delta? We don't know, we don't care. All we can be certain of is that it's an unbalanced system and that the two watt meter method is reliably measuring power. If however a fourth wire protrudes from the box, we're most likely dealing with an unbalanced four wire Y configuration. And given the degree of imbalance we've already observed in the line currents, there will undoubtedly exist imbalance current in the neutral line. As such, the two watt meter method would be blind to the imbalance and we would need to resort to a more expensive and time consuming three watt meter method. This being said, implementing the three watt meter method for an unbalanced four wire Y configuration is relatively easy because all the test points are externally accessible in contrast to the other configurations. All right, that's about it for today. In conclusion, this lecture introduced the two watt meter method and compared and contrasted it with a three watt meter method and the single watt meter method. We discussed the advantages and disadvantages of each method, as well as examine appropriate applications for each technique. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest. We'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource. And be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.